Real estate agent, new home sales consultant. What's the difference? All that and more coming up on The Jeremy Curson Show. Stay tuned. What's up guys? Welcome back to The Jeremy Kirsten Show, where every episode we show you something new on business, entrepreneurship, investing, and other financial things. Today we're gonna be talking about the real estate agent versus the new home sales consultant. What's the difference? What's the pay difference? What are the hours like? And I don't know, maybe it'll help you make a decision on uh, a path that you know you might have never knew you were gonna take before. I know it was definitely an eye-opening experience for me, and uh, maybe I can help you make a decision on your own. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new video. And go ahead and hit that like button, help spread the message to other people. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna, I guess, go into is the time. The time required um, of you at your job, okay? Now, here's the big deal. Real estate agents can do whatever they like, okay? They're an independent contractor, so, well, let's just write I and D, they're independent. Um, they can work whenever they like, um, so their time is flexible, okay? So if you're a stay-at-home mom, or you're young, just starting your uh, business. Oh, I totally misspelled that. Flexible, okay. If, if you have a lot of time to build the career, I think a real estate agent is a, is a pretty good way to go um, because the upside is larger, but I'll get into all that stuff here in a second. Um, so you have a flexible time. Um, yeah, you're doing some open houses on weekends. So, you know, we'll put some weekends Okay, if you're really hustling it, working hard, you're probably working, let's say every weekend, right? But again, it's totally optional, OPT baby, optional. You're not required to. Again, you do whatever you like. You're 1099, that means that you're getting paid with no taxes, okay? So the, the, you will be taxed, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me, but as you get paid, you're reliable for your own taxes. So I'll write uh, responsible for taxes, okay? Responsible for taxes, okay? Now, how much do you get paid? Well, everyone thinks that a real estate agent gets 6%. That's something you typically hear. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta pay the agent 6% to sell my house. Well, that's true but you're forgetting, or you might be forgetting, that they're gonna split that. So that 6%, they're gonna be splitting that with the buyer's agent, okay? The person that brought the buyer to buy the house that you're selling, the, the agent has to split that, typically in half. So then you get down to 3%, okay? So 3% is a pretty typical pay, okay? But, er, pump the brakes, you got broker's fees office fees, transaction fees, MLS dues, um, all this other stuff, okay? A lot of things, not to mention marketing. God, I don't even know. I mean, you can, you can literally just dump, dump, dump thousands of dollars into marketing, okay? So you got, you, well, let, me, let, me, let me slow down here. You got your 3%. Now, obviously this changes um, according to which broker that you work for, okay? Uh, what I'm about to explain, but we're gonna go, for the simplicity of this video, we're gonna stick to the average, or we're gonna stick to the most typical, okay? So don't go leaving a bunch of comments saying, oh, I only pay $100 in transaction fees, and blah, 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 I get that. There's a lot of brokers out there that do that, which I do recommend, if you're gonna be an agent, that is the way to go, because these larger suits, Caldwell Banker and Keller Williams and Remax and Century 21 and all that stuff, it's a very common thing for the broker to take half. That's right, 50%. I'll just go with Caldwell Banker and what I know that they do, okay? They wanna take 50%. I was working for a minute for a guy who wanted to take 60%. 
Obviously, I didn't stay there very long. So that 3% quickly becomes 1.5, okay? So now you're at 1.5. You still got to take the taxes out, okay? And let me start over here. So you're at the 1.5, okay, minus your taxes, um, minus your advertising, which is huge. I mean, how are you supposed to find buyers and sellers with no advertising, okay? So you're one in 1.5 percent of a transaction minus taxes. And again, um, or let me let me let me say that I'm talking about residential real estate, okay? I mean, I hope you already caught on to that. I'm not talking about commercial uh, where the numbers are bigger and, and, and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about the real estate. Let me help this family buy a new home agent, okay? So there we are at one and a half percent minus taxes, minus advertising. And then there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, I, you know, this doesn't even include again, like broker's fees and that, 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 that varies. Um, MLS fees, you're talking about a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, in some cases, uh, for office fees, um, MLS dues, which is like the, the, the listing service, you got to pay monthly dues on that. There's a thing called the Supra that goes on the door that, um, for you to have access to that, there's a monthly payment for that. So it's money, 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 money all the time. Now, if you're making great money, sure, I get it. You can, that pays for that. Okay. But still, let me just give you what is true. Okay. Oh, and let me, let me go ahead and put it here while it's on top of my head. No benefits, no benefits, okay? And what we're talking about benefits, I'm talking about medical, vision, slash dental, 401k, none, you get none. I should just erase it because you don't even get that stuff, okay? So no benefits. In most cases, I'm sure there's a broker that buys his people his stuff, that's great. And you gotta do all your own advertising, um, let's see, do I have pretty much everything there that I wanted to cover? I think so. If not, we'll come back in a sec. Now, oh, right here, again, it kind of goes with the advertising is the marketing and the inventory, okay? So we'll right here, no inventory. You're not, I'll explain this in a sec, but let me just put it here, no inventory, okay? which means that you don't just have a pocket full of homes to sell given to you. They're not just here, go sell it. it... Now going over to new home sales consultant, this is a job that I'll probably make a whole nother video on in and of itself because it's such a diamond in the rough. Um, in my opinion, anyways, I think it's perfect. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it's not perfect and here, I'll, Again, get to that in a second, but let's just go into it. Now, new home sales consultant. First off, you are an employee. Okay, so you're not a 1099. You're an employee and you're getting paid a W-2. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the taxes uh, um, because you're going to fill out that form at the beginning of the year. Tell Uncle Sam how much you want to give him. If you know anything about taxes, you should be taking as much as you can home. It's an idea for a video there. Um, and yeah, that's, that, that's, that's how you get paid. You do get the benefits when you work for a home builder. Okay. In most cases. Okay. I, like I said, I know sometimes things can be different, but you get benefits. So you get in a lot of cases, great Medicare, you get great vision, you get great dental. And a lot of times you get 401k, you get some um, matching on your contributions up to could be three, five, six percent. So we'll write, you know, three to six percent matching, which is pretty awesome. OK, if you're going to make a career out of this. And you got a family to support, you got kids, man, let me tell you, it was so awesome when I was making a lot of money in new home sales and I just psh, psh, wrote a check. Um, which wasn't even a whole lot, um, because I had, you know, all these benefits and I got my daughter a new mouth of braces. I mean, that feeling is awesome. Uh, had I been a broke real estate agent trying to start my career, trying to hustle and put on my money that just, that wouldn't have happened. No, 
Oh, thank you. I just remember something. Time. It takes a lot of time to build up this real estate agent career. Every real estate agent's gonna tell you that. I mean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to diminish it or anything like that, but they're gonna say, yeah, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take many years to really get that ball going, right? To really be able to do the, the six figures. And I'll tell you what, I'm actually gonna go ahead and post on um, right now as I'm speaking, this list um, where it talks about the, you know, the different incomes and how long it takes per the years for you to get that average income. For me to be able to make the money that I'm trying to make, um, being the, you know, I want, I want to be the part, the primary breadwinner of my house. I want to provide nice things for my family, my two kids that I have. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the most money now, not in five years, not 10 years. I want something now. Okay. And I'll take with what I have now and I'll build from there. Um, now new home sales. Okay. Your time. Guess what? You have to work weekends. It is a mandatory thing. So that's one of the biggest things that is a drawback and a deal breaker for a lot of people. Mandatory weekends. And you're like, dude, Jeremy, seriously, Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Both Saturday and Sunday, you're sitting in that model home. So if, if that sounds like that, that, that sucks, and you can't do it, maybe you should go be a real estate agent, okay? You know, work, work your regular job and go show some homes on the weekend. That's fine, okay? Um, so you're gonna be working every single weekend. That's a must. Your hours are anywhere from 10 to six to 10 to seven. Some companies do just this. Some people, uh, some companies will do only 10 to seven. Um, and then some switch back and forth according to the time of the year, daylight savings time. Okay. Um, Sundays typically 12 to close. Okay. Which is six or seven. Um, let's see the, the responsible for taxes. We already kind of covered that right there. Now the pay, Ooh, the good part. Here's the deal. I said that in most cases, a lot of cases, obviously not all, you get paid 1.5% on the real estate agent side, okay? New home sales, in the Houston market anyways, I can't speak for all the different markets, but in the Houston, Texas market, the average new home sales person is getting paid 2%. That's 2% on Again, kind of changes company to company, but in most cases, the total purchase price, okay? So 2% of the total purchase price, all right? <clears throat> so, and that's a big difference if you think about it. So if you sell 10 million in real estate, 10 million, okay? You're either gonna make 150K over here, or you're gonna go make 200K over here, okay? 50K is a fair amount of difference, okay? Um, and then remember, all of these fees and stuff, it just drives me nuts, all the advertising, okay? Here's the beauty, 2% of a total purchase price, and some companies pay 2.25, I've seen some, some uh, competition lately. I've talked to some different employers that pay 2.25. I've uh, talked to some that pay two and a half. And then, like my lucky self, I do get paid 3% for the company that I work for. So, um, and that's rare. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that, okay? So either way, new home salespeople per transaction on average make more than the real estate agent per on the transactions. Now, here's another thing. Um, the, the, the inventory, plentiful, okay? You've got inventory for days. The new home builder is gonna be giving you, I don't know, anywhere from two to six homes at any given time two to six homes at any given time 
uh, to sell. Okay, this is going to be completed homes or homes that are building uh, for the purpose of just quick buy and you know um, sell for you. Um, and it, it's 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 awesome. I mean, you got. As soon as you sell one, the smart thing to do is just start another one. So as it's building, a customer comes in, hey, we like this, da da da, boom, sell it. Um, if it's complete, you get paid fast and you have a company behind you, like a whole business behind you that is gonna be dealing with the title, chasing down the title stuff, uh, making sure that things close on time. You have a mortgage company in a lot of cases that are helping with the loans. Um, it just, it, 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 all you got to do is sell it. I mean, how hard is it? Show up, do your job, do the paperwork, sell the home, which, you know, most cases, if the product's good, you're a likable person, you're going to sell the house. Okay. You, you always have something to sell. Um, even if you don't, okay, you can sell dirt. And what I mean by that is you've got a bunch of lots. You've got a bunch of lots that could be 60 by 135, uh, 70, 135, 81, you know, 40, whatever. You've got land and the subdivided land for someone to come in and pick a floor plan, pick an option, put it on there. It's very simple. This, my friends, you are driving all around the city. You're going to resales. You're having to negotiate, uh, you know, fixes on an existing home. You're having to negotiate um, you know, just all kinds of stuff over here, new home sales, you're selling something that has a warranty. I'm kind of running out of space here to write, um, but a warranty, it's a brand new product. You don't have to mess with any of that other stuff over here. You just show up at your given time, do your job, make the company money, and you're going to make a pretty nice living at it as well. Um, so, you know, I don't know, both of them have their pros and cons, the, you know, the biggest upside obviously is a real estate agent is that you can make your, you can build the business bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger over the years. You can eventually get salespeople underneath you kind of start actually operating as a business, as that business machine and new home sales. You can't. Okay. New home sales. You've got you, you, you're just that you're a salesperson. You go in and do your thing. You've got a neighborhood. And if the community that you have, um, is great. Awesome. You're going to do well. If the community that you have is no bueno, guess what? You're going to suffer financially and there's nothing that you can really do about that. And that's one of the most frustrating parts about new home sales is that if your community is no good, you can watch your coworker working for the same company, make twice as much money as you. It's a bummer. Okay. It's a bummer. Um, real estate agents, you can go anywhere, right? You, I mean, the, the, the city or the, the state is your playground. You can sell any property. Um, so, you know, finding something that matches that buyer is probably not going to be as hard on this side, but you've got, you know, like I said, you got business coming to you in the model home. You sit there, you do, I mean, you don't just sit there, obviously. You gotta do your part in marketing, reaching out to realtors and trying to drive business and being active in the community, blah, 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 okay? But at the most part, for the most part, you've got a company that's pumping hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, building up that brand for the new home construction company versus you're a real estate agent, and you're over here dumping money on Facebook ads and signage around your city and your town, Praying to God, hopefully this works, right? Um, it takes so long to build this up that my best advice, uh, personal advice coming from experience is don't jump into this unless you have something else to kind of keep you afloat. I went from new home sales into a real estate agent, terrible idea. I mean, I went broke fast um, because it's just, it's just not the same thing. You can be brand new, kid out of college, never done real estate in your life, go into new home sales and instantly go make six figures a year, promise you. And if you're not, you're doing it wrong. Somebody told me that when I first start, started and they were absolutely 100% correct. They said, Jeremy, if you're not making 90 in new home sales business, you're doing it wrong and you're probably gonna get fired pretty shortly. And it's true, anybody who's not making six figures 
um, doesn't last too long in this. So you can make um, anywhere, I'm gonna say from one to two to three, um, one, uh, 125, one, you know, is, is kind of like sort of that rolling average. Um, I know people that, uh, you know, have done 250. I know people that have done three. Um, I, I, the guy that um, I've met through different, you know, new home sales events, he's had a couple of years where he was doing four and five hundred thousand dollars and he just shows up five days a week, does his job, goes home at six o'clock. Five hundred thousand dollars. The dude doesn't even have a college degree. You don't need one, okay? So um, hopefully this sparks some interest for some of you and you're like, wow, I know what I'm doing now, whether it's this or this. Um, hey, best of luck to you. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a good thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because um, I'll be talking about more stuff like this to kind of get the idea, um, you know, the ideas rolling. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, guys, take care. Thanks. Bye.